It's time for Inside the L, the podcast covering all things LaSalle athletics and taking you behind the scenes. And now, here's your host, Ed LaFerge. Happy New Year and welcome back to Inside the L, the podcast brought to you by our sponsors and good friends at Humpy's Dumplings. If you have not tried them out, over in the Keswick Circle in Glenside, I highly suggest it. They are delicious. We hope everyone had a great holiday season and are staying safe as we navigate everything going on in the world these days. Uh, Some housekeeping items. Be sure to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts and rate us. Follow us on Spotify and subscribe and like on YouTube by searching LaSalle Athletics on all three platforms. We have a really awesome episode on hand as I will chat with the executive board of our Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Joining me will be the SAC President, Dee Dee Gilmore, Vice President, Zach Ballard, and Secretary Cassie Kincaid. This is an episode that we have been planning for a few months now, and I have very much been looking forward to it because I really appreciate and adore the work that this group does. Um, so I'm really excited to talk to them and, and sh- shed some light on the positive things that they do for LaSalle and in the community. Um, so I'm really looking forward to chatting with these three wonderful human beings. We'll also chat with Dan Lobas, Associate AD for External Relations and the advisor of SAC. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Dee, Zach, Cassie, thanks so much for joining me and welcome to the podcast. How are you all doing? Hello, doing well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. Excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys for for giving me some time. I know it's a a busy time of year for you guys as some of our teams are transitioning back to campus this week and the rest will be coming back over this weekend. So by the time this episode actually comes out, all of our teams should be back on campus and we should be gearing up for what is going to be a very interesting and exciting spring season. So um, I appreciate you guys for giving me um, some some time out of your day. Uh, first off, uh, introduce yourselves um, to our listeners. Let them know who you are and, and give them a little bit of background of, uh, you know, what sport you play and, and all that fun stuff. Um, my name is Dee Dee Gilmore. I am a senior. I run cross country and track for LaSalle. I am SAC president. Um, my major is criminal justice and sociology. And I am from Potomac Falls, Virginia. Uh, my name is Zach. I'm a senior. I'm on the rowing team and uh, accounting major. Uh, my role on SAC is the vice president. And I'm from Egg Harbor Township, New Jersey. My name is Cassie. I'm a senior. I play field hockey. I'm the SAC secretary. I'm a public health major planning to go to PA school and I'm from Hamilton, New Jersey. Awesome. Very cool. Um, If one of you guys just wants to explain to our listeners what the Student Athlete Advisory Committee is and kind of what the purpose of the group is. Yeah, SAC is an organization to bridge communication between the student athletes and administration. On the SAC committee, we have the e-board, like the three of us, and then we have two reps from each team. And we really use SAC as a voice for the student athletes. And it's also like a safe space. And then we advocate for a community service. And SAC members really serve as student athlete liaisons that monitor and discuss happenings on campuses within the conference. And then we go to the national level. So it's really just like a safe space for us to talk about uh, things that are happening and then we can bring them further to like legislature and stuff like that. So. And like, how often do you guys meet? What, what are, what do those conversations look like? Give us kind of the rundown of, of how everything works. Yeah, so uh, we meet once every two weeks. And uh, on top of that, we also have additional meetings um, breaking out in our subcommittees. Uh, So we hear from the athletes uh, and we're really just trying to make everyone's experience better, both as a student and as an athlete. Um, So sometimes our meetings are based off of A10 initiatives or uh, NCAA initiatives. Um, So we take our responses back to the A10s. Uh, Some of the things we talk about is mental health awareness, team, team engagement, especially uh, 
when we're not on campus right now. And um, this year we've been able to even get alumni on the call uh, and hope to make connections with current SAC members. And so, Zach, you mentioned how, um, you know, you guys were still meeting while we weren't on campus in the fall. What was that like? How difficult was it to still maintain your regular business while not being in person? Um, so everyone's favorite when we're not on campus, we're on Zoom meetings. Uh, if we were in person, we'd be meeting in person all together, uh, but still we have to go every two weeks and uh, we're on Zoom now. So it's definitely a little different, but it's still important that we have those meetings and uh, discuss the things we talk about. Zoom, I feel like, has become everybody's best friend, and I, th I think probably one of the most positives coming out of the whole quarantine situation, because I think we can probably do things a little bit more effectively um, using Zoom. So glad to hear that that you guys are still able to, uh, you know, run business and do things as usual. Um, that's that's certainly a, a positive to hear. Um, I, I know that SAC was very involved in the voting initiative this past fall um, with the university and the athletic department. Um, what other projects or initiatives is the group working on or have planned for the remainder of this year? Yeah, uh, this year was pretty awesome. Um, the voting initiative has always been pretty important. We took part in it two years ago for the general election as well. Um, but obviously this year was a whole other stage. It was really fun. Um, it was especially cool when it came down to it. Um, you know, the whole world was watching Pennsylvania and especially Philly counting those last critical votes. So that was really cool that we were able to tell our athletes and ourselves that, you know, we were there for that. And we, we helped uh, make sure those, those votes got in and those people were there. Uh, this year, I mean, it's, it's going to be hard. A lot of times it's just kind of whatever gets thrown at us. Um, but hopefully we're really trying to focus on some of the really cool um, resources the athletic department has rolled out specifically for virtual learning. So things like Headspace, um, we're really excited to just help our athletes understand how those things work and, um, you know, just kind of make sure that everyone's getting the use out of them that they deserve because they are really cool programs. Yeah, you, you, you mentioned, um, you know, some of those different initiatives that, that the university and the department has put out. Um, how, um, talk to me about like certain initiatives that like come out. So for example, you know, we announced the partnership with Headspace, the, the mental health app and, and uh, meditation and whatnot. Like how, how much of a conversation are, are you guys in the room when, you know, the department does something like that? Does, does Brian or the administration come to you guys and talk to you about it a little bit or what, what does that kind of look like? We have like when we collect our ideas from SAC meetings and stuff, Dan is kind of our go to guy. Um, he's awesome. A lot of times he's he's at pretty much all of our meetings uh, and it's so great to have him. He's obviously he's in charge of communication, so he's pretty good at communicating. Um, so we feed him like all the things that we feel the student athletes are really um needing or just even craving like things that we just want to have on campus things we see other campuses doing that we think well why don't we do that um and then dan does a great job of communicating that to whoever needs to know uh and then we usually get told and then we're able to help roll out these programs so like headspace we were told and we were able to you know tell people how excited we were because we kind of knew what it was and and we were able to talk about like oh like the podcast feature is great for like when you're driving like oh I like there's like um a special thing to listen to while you're working out which is so helpful for athletes so um yeah it's cool to kind of have a little little behind the scenes view yeah I mean it's important for for our student athletes to be represented and you guys certainly do a great job at that so I, I commend you and I appreciate the work that you're doing um, with everything involved with SAC. JRM supplier consulting strategic services include competitive sourcing analysis, development of supplier contracts, contract negotiations, supplier contract management, and relationship building. We will help you establish procurement methodologies and utilize best practices for competitive sourcing event development and management. 
we provide experiential benefits for HR, finance, accounting, marketing, IT, supply chain, sales operations, and legal. For more information, visit us online at jrmsupplierconsulting.com. Since 1974, Sharon Environmental Design has provided the highest quality landscape design and build services at the most cost-effective prices. Located in Plymouth Meeting, and four regional offices throughout the greater Delaware Valley, Chiron Environmental Design is prepared to offer professional design, build, and maintenance services to address a wide range of landscape design needs. Chiron maintains specialty divisions in golf, sports, civil engineering, and interiors. To learn more, check us out today at ChironDesign.com. LaSalle fans, are you looking for something to get embroidered or imprinted? If so, let Campus Clothes help you get the look. Whether your team is in the corporate office or on the athletic field, Campus Clothes can supply your team with all its needs. Choose from a variety of t-shirts, uniforms, fleeces, polo shirts, and jackets. Visit us on the web at campusclothes.com. That's K-A-M-P-U-S-K-L-O-T-H-E-S.com. Or give us a call at 215-357-0892. That's 215-357-0892. Looking good is the first step to playing well. Campus closed. Get the look. Talk to us a little bit about um, how SAC works on a larger scale, um, larger than LaSalle. You know, you mentioned the Atlantic 10, um, you mentioned the NCAA, both have their own SAC. How does, how does that all kind of work? Yeah, so every month, either Didi or I go to the A10 SAC meeting, and it's all reps from other schools, which is like pretty cool. And they, they basically bring ideas from other schools. So like, it'll be like someone from another school says what's happening on their campus. And then we'll share a little bit what's happening on our campus. And it's more of a collaborative communication between us. Like we'll bring ideas together and then come up with a whole idea. Like, oh, we think the A10 should have like the diversity week and we think we should make a video out of it where we like pass the ball and that it's like really cool because like one idea might come from another school and then another school and then you like see it all together as a 10 so it's like pretty cool to have that and we talk about a lot of legislature there so this past um fall we talked about the nil name image and likeness and we had to bring a vote from our school. So we talked about it at SAC and you had to say if like you were for it or against it. And we had a lot of meetings with like uh, committees for that and people really educating us on what it is. And then we voted on it and then recently it got passed. So that was pretty cool to see that it was passed. But yeah, and then for uh, NCAA SAC, there's a rep that comes to our a10 SAC meetings and it's actually Eric Jans he used to be the SAC president here at LaSalle so that's pretty cool and like not that we have like a heads up but like it's cool that we can communicate with him too on the side being like the NCAA rep but like also from LaSalle so it's like pretty cool so it's, oh, yeah, oh, it's almost, really almost like you get the inside scoop from from Eric he, he hooks you guys up I mean maybe a little bit <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, it's definitely cool to hear, you know, some of the things that you guys look to do on, on a larger scale. What what are can you tell us about some of the things outside of name image likeness, maybe more recently that you guys may have spoken about? Uh, yeah. So name in the December meeting, it was the name image and likeness and then the transfer rule. So there's five sports that don't have a one time transfer. And we voted on that as well. Like I know, for example, like basketball, if they transfer, they have to sit out a certain amount of days. Right. And we voted if we were like for or against that. And if, yeah. So we, we said that we think it's like pretty fair if like everyone can play in their sport right away. We don't see why there would be an issue with that. And then we did like in the fall, since we were virtual, a lot of other schools weren't virtual, but we did a lot with the voting initiative and the diversity week. So it was a lot of like planning the videos and getting in touch with like the film of the A10. So yeah, it's like pretty cool. Everyone's helpful. And like I said, it's nice to see all the schools like intermingle for one idea for the A10. It's super awesome. Yeah, it's definitely cool to uh, you know, see the work that you guys are doing, not only at LaSalle, but then at the conference level, and then it moves to the national level, like, you you know, you spoke about name image likeness was passed, and 
Uh, the one-time transfer rule is supposed to be voted on at some point during 2021. Um, so, so that's really cool that you guys get to have a say in, in, in some of those larger items that affect every student athlete across the country. Um, with um, our Olympic teams returning to campus, um, how has that gone for those of you who have may have come back to campus and kind of what are you looking forward to this season? Uh, yeah, so I'm not back on campus yet, but I am moving back really soon. Uh, I'm just looking forward to see my team again and uh, be back with all my friends. The campus is weird when it's dead, so it's definitely going to be exciting uh, seeing just people around um, and just having a sense of normalcy. Uh, as much as I'm not a morning person, I am excited to have morning practices again in that structure. And, and so I kind of want to uh, ask each of you kind of a, a, a personal question about your sport and, and your situation at LaSalle and um, Zach and Cassie for you both. Um, you both have new head coaches. Um, you know, certainly for you, Zach, it's somebody who's totally brand new to LaSalle and Cassie coach Mack was the interim head coach and she was an assistant coach and now she's the head coach. Um, can you each kind of talk about, um, what that's been like and how it's been transitioning under their um, their leadership. Yeah, so uh, I'm really excited about the future of LaSalle Rowing. Coach Garbett, uh, he really has made it clear that he wants us to grow and develop uh, both as athletes and professionally. Um, I'm really excited to have him as a coach and a mentor. I think it was a good step uh, in the right direction for us. Uh, but it was a hard time in the middle of a pandemic and um, just not having that relationship with the head coach the whole time. And uh, in a time that most of us needed that extra guidance. Um, but with the little sneak peek preview we had in the fall, uh, he knows a lot and I've already learned so much from him. So I am really excited. And I think he was a great addition to the LaSalle family. It's definitely exciting. I, I had the chance to interview coach Garbett a few times and talk to him and he he sounds really excited to be here so we're 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 eager to see the things that you guys do out on the Schuylkill. Cassie how about you what what's it been like with coach Mack was was there much of a transition considering she's been here for uh, you know a few years already? Um, yeah there was definitely a transition but it was smooth so it made it a lot easier for all of us. Um, I think it was the hardest part was that we were virtual for the fall and coach Mac really has big plans for us as a team. And we got to see her enthusiasm over zoom. We did a lot of meetings and fun games. And I think that really showed us all how excited she is for us as a team, yeah. but we have huge plans as a squad for sure. And we're definitely excited that she's leading us this year and we're ready to get back on campus with her as our coach. Yeah, we're definitely excited to see the things that you, both of your teams do um, this year and heading into the future. Certainly, uh, it, it's going to be an exciting time uh, for, for both of your sports. Didi, um, obviously last fall was really special for the cross-country programs. Um, what was it like to be a part of that experience of winning an Atlantic 10 championship? Yeah, that was probably, I can't even describe the feeling. It was just so much joy. Um, it was actually pretty wild because it was in my hometown. It was my home cross country course that I've ran like over a hundred times easily in high school. And I've won races there individually. And I can tell you, it is such a different feeling when you win as a team. It was so cool. It was so great to be there. Um, and it was so cool, like how many people drove down because uh, it is it's a bit of a drive and there were a lot of people there. Um, it was kind of like really annoying when we had such that moment, that great momentum. We were, you know, looking strong going into outdoor track. We had a killer indoor track season and, you know, it got cut short. But I think I mean, not many teams get to say that they're defending champs like both times around even though we didn't get to race so you know I'll take it as long as we can keep our title a little bit longer and yeah. I do think that we can uh, we can hold on to it yeah, we certainly hope so we're excited to watch you guys do I know um, after you guys had won the championship during one of our um, all staff meetings um, uh, amongst the athletic department staff 
um, you guys actually came in, uh, both your teams and, and brought the trophy. And um, I got to say, like, as a staff member, right, like one of the things that we strive for is to support our programs and our student athletes to the best of our abilities. And so to see you guys come in with the trophy and the staff gave you guys a standing ovation, like it's giving me goosebumps now thinking about it. Yeah. Like it's, it, it was such oh, a cool goodness. experience for me. I can't exactly. imagine what that was like for you guys. Yeah. And those, those trophies are heavy. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they, they certainly look it. <laughs> yeah. They're big guys. Peter Buxbaum founded Philadelphia Mortgage Company with one goal in mind, to help people make smarter, better informed financial decisions when looking to purchase a home. With 40 years of experience and well over 10,000 clients served, PMC is committed to providing financial solutions and guiding individuals through the mortgage process. For your mortgage need, call Peter Buxbaum at 215-740-8999 or visit philadelphiamortgage.com. It's time, time to get a health plan that's perfect for times like this. A plan that has you covered for free doctor visits 24 seven with telemedicine and more. Get the plan more people choose than any other. Call 1-855-251-3131 today to get an Independence Blue Cross plan. I wanna jump into our Fast Five. This is something we, we do um, with our guests during each of our episodes. It's gonna be a little different this time since we have uh, three of you on the call. So. I'm going to fire out a question. I'm going to direct it at one of you guys and give me your rapid fire um, kind of response and uh, uh, your take on the question. So let's, Didi, let's start with you. Um, you, we all were in quarantine in 2020. It was a crazy year. Um, I think everybody was doing a whole lot of streaming of so, all sorts of different shows. What was your kind of go-to quarantine show? Uh, definitely Love Island, Australia. I don't know. It's the accents. It was summertime there. They got to mingle. I did it. It looked fun. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Zach, what, um, if you had to go into quarantine again, what, what are your must have quarantine items? Okay. So my phone, obviously, um, a full pantry and a full fridge, um, also, not really an item, but a, a solid living pod. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I think uh, I think we all have our our uh, quirks about the things that we want with us. Um, I know uh, Coach Garbit told me um, there was a certain type of potato chips that he and his wife like. Like that was one of the, that's was, that was one of his items. So um, we all definitely have specific things that we want, and I couldn't. I couldn't imagine answering that question myself. So uh, appreciate your, your honesty and, and your quickness in that. Um, Cassie, if you had to go back and be offered a full scholarship for any sport other than field hockey, what would it be and, and why? Definitely softball. Uh, I played softball my whole entire life, and it was a tough decision to decide if, if I wanted to play college field hockey or college softball. So if I could go back, yeah, I'd have to play college softball. What 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 position were you? Uh, outfield. Outfielder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Dee Dee, who is your favorite athlete of all time, and and why? Um, I think I'd have to go with Shalane Flanagan. Uh, she won the New York Marathon a couple years ago, and she was like the first American woman to win it in a couple of years. So it was a, it was a really cool moment for the U S team and everyone watching to see her win that. Um, she's also just an incredible athlete overall. She, she also, I think she has one of the longest careers in distance running. Um, and it's just amazing to see that every year I'm like, Oh, she's going to retire. I'm so sad. And she like bounces back and breaks another record. So um, she's definitely my favorite definitely done some great things that's that is for sure uh this last one i want to ask all three of you um just in case we have uh we, we have the chance for a potential tiebreaker since we have three of you school colors are blue or gold you have to pick one which one are you taking dd you first i think blue goes better with my hair fair enough cassie yeah definitely blue big blue girl Oh, uh, Zach, are you going to make it 3-0 on, uh, on the blue side? Yep. <laughs> I'm also saying blue. 
it's just my favorite color. <laughs> there you go. Well, listen, um, I really appreciate the three of you for taking some time out of your day to join us here on the podcast. I was, uh, like I had said earlier, really looking forward to this episode and kind of picking your brain and, and, and hearing all about the great things that you guys are doing um, as a, a, a student athlete advisory committee. So I appreciate you guys. The LaSalle community appreciates you all. Um, so please relay that to all of your SAC reps that are, that, that, uh, you know, represent their respective uh, teams. Um, so I, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, to you guys. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. That was our student athlete advisory committee executive board, president Dee Dee Gilmore, vice president Zach Ballard and secretary Cassie Kincaid up next after a quick break and messages from our sponsors we're going to be joined by Dan Lobas associate AD for external relations I'm Ed LaFerge we'll be back in just a sec Sports are back and at LaSalle, they truly are something special. And boy, come game day, we take it to the next level. Fans are locked in, wearing their finest blue and gold. But it's only a real game day at LaSalle when you have done one more thing. Break out the hers. Dial up the crunch with hers pub pretzels. Going for the snack win doesn't get easier or tastier. You break out the crunchy dip receiver with hers ridge chips. Both go perfectly with cheering on the Explorers to the last second. Game time, halftime, overtime. It's your time to break out the hers. Building a great team takes many years of practice. I'm Dennis Pagliotti, and at the Bricklayers and Ally Craft Workers Local 1 of Pennsylvania, Delaware, we've been practicing since 1865. Check us out at bac-1.org. That's bac-1.org. Looking for a new career with purpose? Check out iPipeline, a leading innovator of cloud-based software that streamlines the selling and servicing of life insurance and financial protections products. Located right in Philly's backyard, iPipeline is passionate about helping consumers gain access to financial products that provide protection for the people they love. Check out iPipeline.com slash careers today and learn more about what your future could look like as a piper. The men and women of IBEW, Local Union 98, support LaSalle University and the Explorers. From the time of Tom Gola to Lionel Simmons, and to this day, the members of Local 98 have provided the electrical, wiring, and network needs for LaSalle. For more information, look us up online at IBEW98.org. And we're back on Inside the L, the podcast, and joining us now is Dan Lobas. He's the Associate AD for External Relations and the SAC Advisor, guy I know pretty well, my boss. Dan, how are we doing? Thanks so much for joining us. Doing great, Ed. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I understand this is your first year working with this group at LaSalle, and, and what has it been like for you? This has been a challenging year for everybody across the country, Um, whether you're in college athletics or any um, walk of life, it's been unique in many ways. Um, You know, my first year as SAC advisor has been uh, similar to, I'm sure, everybody's experience. Uh, You know, we're trying to figure out the virtual meetings, the uh, connectivity, uh, while not being able to meet face to face. And um, you know, we've worked through a lot of issues that have come about, but we've also done done some good things as well. So, um, you know, all in all, a good six months, uh, you know, but we're really looking forward to being back on campus, even though it'll be uh, a different situation when we do return, but we're really looking forward to that opportunity. As a member of our senior leadership team in the athletic department, what would you say is the administration's hopes and expectations for SAC? You know, SAC is, it stands for Student Athlete Advisory Committee. And what it is, is a representation of our entire student athlete population and our entire group of varsity athletic teams. And so my hope and my expectation is that this group is a, a voice for all of their teams. And when they come to our meetings, they bring, um, you know, some of the issues that have uh, popped up within their teams to the table, and then we can discuss them as a group and hopefully um, come to a resolution and come to an understanding of this is how 
we're going to improve the department. This is what we're going to do to, you know, resolve that issue that you have within your team or within your group. And um, how do we move it forward? How do we continue to grow as a student athlete population as a department overall? You know, you, you touched on it a little bit earlier, but given the circumstances of this school year, what have been some of the challenges advising this group in a complete in a completely virtual setting? Yeah, I think that um, not having a set time uh, to um, meet every single week because everybody's doing something different at any given time. Um, availability is different than if they're on campus. And so, um, you know, finding times to meet. So we would meet, sometimes uh, we would meet at nine o'clock at night on a Friday. Um, and then other times it would be at two o'clock on a Thursday, or, you know, it just kind of varied based on the majority, um, the availability of the majority. So I think that that's been one of the challenges, but also um, a lot of the things that SAC does is, um, you know, it, it needs the interaction of, of the campus community. So whether it's a, um, a community service initiative or whether it's attending games as, as SAC groups or, you know, as varsity student athletes going to other varsity student athletes games, um, a lot of those things really weren't able to be done because we didn't have the opportunity to be on campus. So those have been the challenges, um, but we were still able to do a couple of different things that I thought were really productive and really proactive. So, you know, we had a small group go to a local voting station um, around campus and hand out some waters to those that were waiting to vote um, and, and hand out some rally towels just to kind of promote LaSalle and um, really show that we're there for the community and not just our campus community and our student athletes and our students. Um, so I thought that that was a really uh, a good event and we're looking to continue those types of things second semester. So would you say uh, the, the group's been able to accomplish some of its goals, even though they've been dealt this unique opportunity and interesting circumstances that have been this school year? Yeah, I think we were able to, to accomplish some goals that we had. I think there are, there are always goals that you're that are more long term than short term. And, and we have those and we're going to talk about those when we have our first meeting, um, you know, in mid January. But, um, you know, I think that the uniqueness of this year have has um, has put up some obstacles that um, unfortunately you know prevent us to from reaching some of those goals but um, all in all I, I do think it was a productive year I think um, the student athletes that were part of it um, I hope they got a lot out of it you know we're we're planning to have some uh, alums that were involved with SAC in previous years back for our meetings in second semester and moving forward. So to kind of, um, you know, connect the alumni group with this group and, and show that it, it means a lot to be a part of this group. Um, it means a lot to their um, understanding of how organizations work and, and their growth as, as students and, and as uh, people as they work to um, make themselves more marketable when they graduate uh, for, for opportunities of employment. So I'm um, really looking forward to the future with the group. And, and we have a really uh, unbelievable uh, um, set of student athletes to, to be a part of it. So can't wait. Well, Dan, thanks so much for uh, taking some time and joining us here on the podcast. I know you, you've got a busy schedule, so we really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Ed. And as a Western New York native, go Bills. <laughs> there he is, Dan Lobaz, Associate AD for External Relations and the SAC Advisor. We appreciate Dan. We appreciate the three student athletes that we had on from our SAC eboard, Dee Gilmore, Zach Ballard, and Cassie Kincaid. What a phenomenal group they are and, and the things that they're looking to do at LaSalle and have already done uh, previously this last semester are remarkable. So we're really excited to see the things that they do moving forward. We also want to thank our corporate sponsors and good friends at Humpty's Dumplings for sponsoring this episode of Inside the L, the podcast. We appreciate them. Check them out over in the Keswick Circle in Glenside. 
Housekeeping items before we wrap up for this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Give us a follow on Spotify and subscribe and like on YouTube by searching LaSalle Athletics on all three platforms. That's going to do it for this one. We'll see you in a few weeks. I'm Ed LaFerge. We appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Inside the L, the podcast. Go Explorers!